Okay. Hi, my name is Jacob Savage. I am the Director of Concern. Hi, I'm Neil. I'm the Director of Development and Partnerships at Concern. And Concern is an alternative to 911 for reporting mental health crises, homelessness issues, substance abuse issues. So we're focusing on bringing this service to San Francisco and initially just the Tenderloin District. The Tenderloin, of course, has like over 50% of all homeless people in the city and it's a really small, dense um, area. So it's a perfect place for us to start. The current response to the homelessness issue, mental health crises from police, from paramedics, firefighters, and from the hot team are all really lacking um, in effectiveness and they're all very costly. So we have a mobile reporting app that allows community members to report the location and the details of a crisis instead of calling 911. If you ever call 911 in the city, uh, you're probably put on hold like half the time you call. So this is instantaneous. It sends a report to our dispatch platform online. And I will give you a quick walkthrough of how the technology works. So this is the dispatcher dashboard where you have users, responders, and dispatchers. The admin can add new responders, new dispatchers. This is the report landing page. The user, like a community member of the tender line, reports a crisis, uploads the location, and then they're able to add details, demographic information, um, urgency. So after they've uploaded the details, they respond, or the dispatcher selects from a drop down menu uh, for available responders. The available responder gets a uh, text message of the report. The reporter also gets a text message confirming that the responder is on the way. And here's the transcript view mode where the dispatcher actually gets to see a timestamp transcript of all of the, uh, all of the, like, on my way, I'm, I'm here, you know, it's tracking response time, it's tracking all the various things that are going on within the report. And then, of course, the calls are sent to history, where you can archive it, and then, of course, we're going to send that information to Data SF, where you can query it and make a graph. So, so our service model is based on the idea of compassionate response, which incorporates four pillars. Prevention, connection, diversion, and support. Uh, we found that integrating these four pillars has led to successful outcomes. We're already on the street. We've been out there for months now. And uh, one of the biggest issues I think that this helps alleviate is uh, the tension between law enforcement and residents, which we all know is a big problem locally and nationally. And so we, we have found a, a lot of success with this model. Um, so who uses the app? Um, residents of the Tenderloin, and not just residents, people that work, maybe many of you in here work in Soma, Mid-Market, Tenderloin area. You walk out of your offices and you see somebody shitting on the street and smoking crack. And you know, that's just the reality of the, the neighborhood. That's the way it is. Um, families, small businesses, uh, believe it or not, cops have been using Concern a lot. Um, and they're a big support of ours and uh, service providers. So for example, Concern will connect a uh, homeless person to a workforce development program and then maybe use a service like Career Hub to, uh, to track them. So we really want to emphasize how Concern is different than any other crisis response agency in San Francisco. Um, first of all, we're specifically focused on the Tenderloin, so the issue of slow response times goes away because it's so close. Um, all the calls are close together. We do compassion cultivation training for all of our responders, and this is really the foundation of the response that we're doing, and it's what differentiates us between uh, you know, law enforcement response and our response. We're not responding with tasers or guns, we're responding with compassion, and that manifests in various ways. We don't bill, we don't bill insurance like uh, ambulance or um, hot team does. We have a real-time crisis reporting mobile app, and then we use alternative approaches like playing music and, and doing art projects and engaging with people on that level. So uh, this was inspired by an organization called CAHOOTS in Eugene, Oregon. They've been doing this for 26 years, sending crisis responders to mental health calls. So some of the audience might be thinking, well, great, you're playing music and art, you're diffusing a, a situation that's already nonviolent. But 
Here's the dollars and cents that really proves it, that shows it's a proven concept. It saved $28 million for the city of Eugene since 2012. And the innovation that Concern brought in was the mobile app crisis report. We've got a great team, but you guys can get involved by going to uh, the Concern Hack Fest 2016, April 1st through 3rd, looking for designers, developers, sponsors. I've heard so many great presentations of people that should totally be there and collaborate with us. Um, there's going to be live music, a 14-piece cumbia band, and uh, anybody who's interested in actually being a responder with us on the street doing outreach in the Tenderloin, we're going to have a training uh, to get that going. Thank you so much. Can you, this is your organization, it seems like it's a great, uh, doing great stuff. How can you keep it operating? So the long-term model is, uh, like Neil talked about, Eugene Oregon saying uh, the organization saves the city millions of dollars per year in diverting people away from emergency rooms, diverting law enforcement. Eventually, this is going to save the city a bunch of money. But for now, we're going to focus on private funding, and philanthropists, and stuff. We are about to get our IRS uh, 5 so. uh, If you have one action that you want us all to take, what would it be? I would love for you guys to come to the Hackfest <laughs> and help hack for concern and help uh, develop some other partnerships for us um, and become a responder if you're interested in actually getting on the street. Can you give a real example of a citizen reporting an issue and the follow-through and the result? Yeah, absolutely. I, in fact, I'm a little distracted because we had a report come in three minutes before we got up here of a guy taking a dump in a fountain at a UN Plaza in the Civic Center. And he's not wearing pants, and the reporter is really concerned about him. So right before I got up here, I dispatched three of our responders, and hopefully uh, they get out there, and I'll be able to tell you an update in a few minutes. Um, are you working with other like uh, community groups or business districts? I know in San Francisco is like um, neighborhood organizations that do sort of similar kinds of things where you can yeah. call in and how do you how do you yeah. integrate with them? We, we think of ourselves as the glue that connects all these service providers that often aren't communicating with each other at all. We we forged a very novel connection between parole and um, case managers from the homeless outreach team. Nobody's thought about connecting those. So we're just trying to glue everything together and almost provide meta case management, connecting people to their case managers and making sure that they're staying on track. Uh, Right. Uh, the app itself is just for reporting. The dispatch platform allows us to, uh, it, we use a Twilio API that allows us to communicate with all sorts of partners via text message. So um, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, articles or, you know, like rants from very entitled tech workers about homelessness in San Francisco. And I'm wondering what has been the response from the tech community to concern and have they been supportive? They have. They have been. For example, the CTO and co-founder of Pantheon just gave us his his office to run this hack fest for free and you know, help sponsor it in various ways. It, it's great because what we're not we're doing is we're serving the, the the person in need. We're serving the homeless individual. We're not serving the business owner who's complaining about uh, losing business from a drunk person being outside. Um, and by serving the homeless person, we're actually serving everybody much better. So yeah. Did you build on that for your funding model? Corporate entities, particularly the VCs within them, and say back this with the government with the idea that in five years on ten years on we can demonstrate cost savings to them. And yeah, it's a great they, idea. They, they, get, they get the coverage of the yeah. good I'm sorry, I've been talking, I've been both the mic. That's great. You should come to Hackfest and teach us how to do that. <laughs> we'll talk after. Yeah. They're definitely lacking in their ability to respond quickly without showing up with a gun. Cops can show up pretty quickly, but they show up and they, there's like this inherent escalation. Um, there is that immediate crisis response thing missing. But another thing that really goes neglected is, is trying to instill a, a sense of self-worth and empowerment in our clients, because it's one thing to refer them to a service, 
But if they don't have the desire to take care of themselves and actually get back up their feet, then they're not going to follow through. So um, when we play music with people and do art, those, those are the things that really seem to grow their sense of self worth. I have a question. Yes. Are you connected to Project Homeless Connect? Yeah, absolutely. They're like the the master database of all services. Um, I must have, I missed that because I was like reading stuff. Sorry. Oh, I didn't say it. Oh, okay. I just did not know. Okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> they have a PhD sixty one um, thing, and we we go out there and um, meet clients. We're yeah, PhD sixty one is just one of many organizations that we're trying to feed people to. Thing. Uh, one more. Last one. Last one. What functionality are you hoping to see completed in that What functionality are you hoping to see completed at the Hackathon? Oh, great question. Okay, so, and it's so cool that Data SF is here. You guys are great. We are working on creating a information sharing platform for Concern and two of its partner agencies. One is Code Tenderloin, does job placement. Uh, for Tenderloin residents with tech companies in the surrounding area. The other is Lava Main, it's a mobile shower uh, organization. So we are trying to find a common uh, user interface for us to share information and maintaining you know, HIPAA and other privacy standards. Um, so that's, that's one thing, trying to fix bugs in the app, fix the WordPress homepage. Technology, what, neither one of us is uh, really the techie, so we, we need a lot of support on that end. Um, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate the question. Thanks, everyone. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you a, a quick break, but I want you to come back this time. Uh, uh, at uh, 1920C, our hosts here today have uh, made some more coffee, so there is, we're no longer out of coffee, so thank you very much for, for contributing that, too. Um, but everybody stand up, take a quick stretch break, maybe grab some coffee. Let's come back in like three minutes and we're going to have a discussion. Don't leave. Um, and the uh, presenters, if you can just sort of make yourselves, you know, visible too. And stay around. Thanks.